welcome to That's What I Call Marketing, the podcast where you will hear from the leading lights in the marketing world and listen to their unique insights. Well, the Super Bowl is done and the Chiefs have won. And today, Taylor Swift joins me to give a rundown of the ads. She does. But the ads have aired and with time to reflect, we're going to take a look at the ads we saw this year. Now, personally, I laughed a lot at this year's crop of ads. It feels like we've moved out of the earnest, slightly vanilla work of previous years to work that entertains. And according to Calig Northwestern University, they're saying it's a great year for advertising. We saw very few brands miss the mark. Now, I've seen other comments online today, for example, System One saying there are more uh, one star ads than ever before. So it seems to be a bit of a mixed bag, but you know what? Making a Super Bowl ad is hard. And we're not here to shoot down anyone's work. Uh, and we know what we like and what an audience likes are often wildly different. That's why this is such a wonderful business. So we're here to celebrate the brilliance of the creative teams and brands that took the step to advertise this year. So well done to everybody involved. This conversation is just that. It's a conversation about ads amongst people who love ads. And we're talking about the things that we like and the things that we like a bit less. So I brought together an amazing panel of experts who are going to join me in reviewing the ads. First up, I have Kerry Martin. She's CMO of Goose, Goosebumps Brand Advisors and has previously held senior roles at Melt, BBDO, VW, BMW and Harley Davidson. Next up, I have Dave Horton and Matt Woodhams roberts They are the ECDs and partners of Special USA. And yes, they are the guys who worked on the Uber Eats ad. So definitely we are going to be talking about that today. Now, before we get into today's episode and the word from our sponsor, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize and dedicate today's episode to John Trainer, who passed away far too soon earlier this month. John was the founder and CEO of Onside and was a highly respected figure in the international sponsorship community, helping elevate the discipline of sponsorship and marketing. John was being described as the definition of a gentleman with one of the sharpest minds. And we thought this would be a fitting episode to dedicate to your memory, John. Today's show is supported by The Indie List, the leader in providing you with easy access to hundreds of highly experienced marketers quickly and cost effectively. Visit theindielist.ie to speak to the Indie List team today. If you would like to reach an engaged community of marketing leaders, get in touch with That's What I Call Marketing to discuss sponsorship opportunities. Thanks so much for joining me on That's What I Call Marketing. Um, really appreciate you all taking the time to join me today. I, I do want to start by just asking you a bit about your Super Bowl Sunday, what you did. Kerry, I know you're a huge football fan, but your team's weren't in Super Bowl Sunday. C can you tell me about what you did, where you were? No. Yeah, so I was recovering from a terrible cold that's going around. So I was in my pajamas, snuggling with a newly adopted dog. <laughs> um, no skin, you know, either betting or passion for one of the teams uh, or the other. But I guess it came down for me, like, which team I liked less or more or less, you know, so my husband's <laughs> a Raiders fan and so he hates the Chiefs and the Niners oh, kicked the Packers out of, you know, contention for Super Bowl runs a couple times. So they were the ones that I didn't want to win. So there you go. Uh, so it was, uh, and I'm in Austin, Texas. So we had lots of things smoking in the backyard. Mm. That was, that was it. And people over, were there people over with you? Like, was it, a, I always have this vision of gangs of people, but then, you know. No, usually I think we just had such an active holiday season. My husband and I looked at each other and said, you know. No. We still have a holiday hangover. Um, and uh, I do have to note, though, that I did um, get real authentic Wisconsin cheese curds and made those up as well as homage to my Packers. So oh, wow. um, if you've never had a deep fried Wisconsin cheese curd, it must be top on your list. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've never heard of it. So when you come to Dublin, bring some over. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sounds good. Uh, Dave, how about you? What was your Super Bowl Sunday? Uh, I was at a, a friend's house. So there, there were quite a few people around. Um, I, there were, there were actually a lot of kids as well. And a lot of, a lot of girls who were very into the chiefs and very up for supporting, um, Taylor Swift. And so that was, was she playing? 
<laughs> yeah. According to them, she definitely was. Um, <laughs> was it, so it was a really funny kind of like kids versus adults sort of energy. Um, I would say the house was pretty split, half kind of 49ers, half Kansas City. I don't think anyone rooting too hard for either side, except for the, uh, the Swifties uh, going full <laughs> force. Um, but it was also a house full of, uh, I think I was there, there were, it was me and one other person who works in advertising. So it's, it's, a, it's always a really fun thing to kind of watch it with people who have no sort of proximity to the industry and like, see how they actually react to ads. And, and, uh, that was, yeah, it was super fun. I definitely want to get into that. Matt, how about you? What were you doing? I was at a, uh, fairly crowded, but not too full outdoor bar with, random people who I, I didn't know. So it was kind of nice to be in, in public with, uh, with, uh, you know, see some honest reactions. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, I, I wouldn't say young, but older Taylor Swift fans, um, who were more aggressively cheering for the game than, than any of the sports fans. <laughs> really? so that was uh, an interesting kind of addition to the year. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I grew up in the Bay area, so I was, uh, obviously cheering for the 49ers, uh, nothing against taylor swift and i don't want to get into that but uh <laughs> it was a I, I i was heavily invested in the game and in the commercials having uh, you know obviously a commercial ourselves in in the game so it was uh, yeah. it was sort of a it, it was it's a nice experience when you can have like your team and your commercials all in one event and get kind of out in public with a bunch of uh, other kinds of people around you with with mm. their different too so um that, it was a lovely reaction. experience in los angeles outside uh fairly sunny and mild for a winter day yeah yeah i'm jealous I, I spent a couple of summers in san francisco um so i was probably rooting for the 49ers but obviously very late here so we recorded it and myself and my son were going to watch it the next morning and i at breakfast i saw him and i was like you don't know the result do you he's like he's 10 and he goes no 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 i don't i don't and then my wife walked in and she goes, oh, I do. The Chiefs won. Oh. <laughs> you were about to watch it. Uh, that's <laughs> you know a idea. That's Five a quarters it to get such, to that. It was such a good game. Yeah. But yeah. Apparently it was sad anyway, we didn't. I'd love to talk to you. It, it, the experience of watching it and Kerry, you were at home with your husband and you were kind of seeing it as, you know, because again, I watched all the ads online, which is a totally false experience right so what like when you watched it as the game unfolded what were kind of some of the ads that kind of stood out for you that you kind of got oh, that's that really caught my attention yeah well i'm just going to start out with the one that like so i i'm always curious you know my husband's taken a very active um interest in advertising and marketing since we've been together he's in construction so like we okay. couldn't be like in two different sort of worlds and Whatever ad it was with the mullets, the guys with the mullets. Oh, I mean, yeah. Kawasaki. Kawasaki. Yeah. Oh, Kawasaki. <laughs> and, you know, irony, I used to work at Harley Davidson and BMW motorcycles. So I was like, why do you like that ad? He's like, oh, just anything with mullets is funny. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, interesting. Very guy, dude, you know, approach. I get it. Um, so I will tell you the one ad that I was really looking forward to, um, and yes, I did watch it beforehand, but I wanted to see it in situ. With, I used to be the CMO at Volkswagen, and to see their nostalgia ad that was celebrated their 75 years of being in America. And, you know, I mean, it was a very like ripomatic style, you know, nostalgia, ad type of thing you know um for me i just like there was no like story idea like you know creative surprise that i'm used to with mm. volkswagen like which really was like the essence of a volkswagen but i mean it was a beautiful ad i think the thing that was interesting though was that there were no american auto manufacturers so that was like a big not one um u.s based auto manufacturer advertised this year so they were all foreign oh right that's a good point i never i didn't pick up on that you know really interesting to me um i mean i think i think overall what i'm just gonna say is like 
my hair wasn't blowing back. And like, I went like, oh my God, I wish I would have done that. Like I got like massive goosebumps about like anything this year, you know? Um, and that's usually sort of my yardstick. Like if I wish I would have done that, like that, you know, wins the day. Um, I mean, I think for me, some of the things that I got excited about, first of all, it was pregame, but it was the YouTube birds flying South ad. Like, I think there's an underestimating um, of like what pregame could possibly be going forward. Mm. Um, like, do you have to be in the game? Um, so that was really interesting. And then I loved the Google um, Pixel phone guided frame ad. Like, I just thought, wow. That was like a really like a, a good story well told for me. And I um, with that one, I sorry, I saw that one as well. And I thought like sometimes it's really, really hard to get a product central to an ad without it, you know, you know, being forced and all. And I thought that like mm -hmm. it was clearly obviously central to the whole piece. So I thought like Google they did I thought they did quite well. And I, I didn't know that was a product feature because you know sometimes like i think this product feature can tend to be really boring <laughs> like we do a lot still on b2b where it's like we've a lot of products we need to and features we need to tell people about it. so yeah i thought that was a nice piece of work it was, it was beautiful yeah beautifully done and many others but i'll, I'll think of them as we go i have my notes the uh the google one and just watching it with people again who were not in advertising the uh that was one of the few that played that everybody got quiet. I think just because of the, oh, yeah. the visual, like the, the the visual difference, like hmm. seeing something on the Super Bowl that is that visually sort of interesting and isn't just big explosions at CG or, or kind of kind of the right. Super Bowl app, but but to see a blurry screen for most of the time that it's up, like everybody got quiet. And then the storytelling of just kind of being two faces in frame, two faces in frame, two faces in frame. Again, the simplicity, like it's the simplicity of that that allows people who are not really paying attention, but kind of paying attention yeah. to really get on board. And then, and then when it got to the kind of punchline of three faces in frame, I, that one, that one sort of silenced the room in a way that most other ads didn't when I was watching it. I actually think two of those ads that you called out, both VW and Google, it, in a work, it seemed like this year, there was a lot of very big, very humorous kind of productions. Mm. Like people are going big and, and kind of going for the laugh and going for like, you know, the silly. A lab. Yeah, like and celebrity. I think it, VW and Google both stood out really well because they were a bit more on the, I mean, not fully emotional, but they were, there's a sincerity to it mm -hmm. that came through and broke through. And I don't know that, I think maybe last year there was, there was more in that tone. And this year, I think people mm -hmm. went a little bit more big and humorous and it did help them stand out. So they, they were clear yeah. kind of stoppers, which... They were nice, yeah. Yeah. And in the in the outside bar in the beautiful LA sunshine, Matt, which were the ones that kind of you notice people or observe people kind of go, "No, oh, that's interesting." <laughs> well, I think there's the easy crowd pleasers uh, talking like walking. Um, I think was like played really well, just because. It yeah. it, it, mm. It's just I think that's one that anyone can imagine the voice in their head and try to do it themselves. So it's almost engaging in that way like you can jump right in and, and try and do a walk-in impression so i think that you know that that's just an easy crowd pleaser in similarly i think the uh the state farm with arnold schwarzenegger with mm. the good neighbor it, yeah. it it's something that's it's simple and 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 easy to repeat and i think you can kind of play along with that and i thought those played very well yeah but a somewhat uh, well lubricated uh, crowd at the bar. <laughs> two, ads, two ads to get people to do their own impression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, did Pizza Hut do the? Do, do, were people repeating the Pizza Hut as well? Because I, I was like, oh god, that's new. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, and the other one that it seemed to like people seemed quite into cheering for were just uh, uh, the the religious ads. And it was, I think, in a, in a different way, just kind of jumping into like, oh, that one's for God. <laughs> <laughs> it, it became a bit of a game. Like, is this one going to be for He Gets Us or uh, for Scientology <laughs> or where? Or Timu. We? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Timu definitely wins the most annoying, <laughs> like, award on my. Wow, how many spots do they buy? 
we were trying to figure out if that was a regional thing or if they actually bought that many Super Bowl ads and just ran the same thing over and over again. I don't know if you guys saw four Timu ads that were exactly the same thing. But well, we I read did. that I read that they did. I read that that's they bought four of the same spots. Yeah, I mean, it definitely that was a really interesting strategy to get people yeah. to talk about it because the first time it played, nobody talked about it. The second time, people were like, they just and by the by the fourth time, everyone was like, I'm gonna check out what Timu is. What is this like? thing that, that that they that they keep running okay yeah. so sorry what they, what they lacked in production value they invested in media yeah <laughs> sure. it's like 30 million to buy the spots you know 30 grand on making it <laughs> yeah. it was uh is timu big there because like it's pretty huge here like it's very popular here i don't i am I'm gonna, I, I don't, I'd never heard of Timu before yeah. personally. I was sitting next to a woman who was like, I always thought that was a scam, but if they could buy that many Super Bowl spots, maybe it's not. So, like, yeah. I'm reassuring to her that it's a legitimizer. Yeah. 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 Well, my, it, my it's not. So, handled. speaking, so it's definitely aimed at women. So, you know, you guys aren't the audience um, yeah. <laughs> per se. <laughs> um, but I will say that there's, it's, it's really kind of a weird, like it's a Chinese company. And so there's a lot of people who are kind of like, you know, they're looking, finding, mining my data. They're going to know everything about me. Kind of like the TikTok, you know, type of, you mm -hmm. know, paranoia, mm -hmm. um, if you will. Um, so, I mean, I have bought a few things on Timu just to test it out because I was really curious, but they're not on like my high online shopping list by any means. I mean, it's just... Right. It's shockingly cheap, yeah. like weird stuff, you know, and like so that's kind of their shock and awe volume, you know, is is that? Yeah, it's like my daughter bought my wife eyelashes for her car as a joke Christmas present, and I think they cost like two euros. And like, yeah, but you know, you're like, none of this makes any sense. It's like you know, sustainability, yeah. like like none of us <laughs> just give yeah. stop. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And um, you mentioned kind of, I guess, themes like, you know, it, it did feel to me this year that it was, you know, more about entertain, lightness, humor, uh, having enjoyment. Because I think we went through a couple of years where it was a bit more earnest and serious, you know, definitely coming out of COVID. It was like, oh, it was all mm. pretty vanilla-y, I think, <laughs> for a long period. Um, is that a, do you think that's a good thing? Were you guys happy to see kind of that enjoyment and entertainment come back? Or do you feel I if love, everyone goes that way, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge? No, I love that. I love that. I love that companies were taking big swings in entertainment again, that it feels like, because the, the thing that, the thing that people love about watching ads on Super Bowl is that companies get outside of their comfort zone and they swing for the fences and they, they don't feel like the mm -hmm. ads that you always see. And I think the last couple of years, uh, the Super Bowl has lost a bit of that, a bit of that um, crowd pleasing sort of nature. And everyone's, they, they just, when they just feel like kind of responsible or somber or normal ads, I mean, definitely the tear jerkers have their, have their place, but, but for companies to take huge swings at entertainment, like that's the thing that makes it the event. And I think you kind of need that uh, for people to look forward to it, for them to want to talk about it. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I was, I was really glad to see, see kind of the big swings again. Yeah. Matt. Yeah. I, I think celebrity like was a big, big theme. Like I don't remember so many celebrities. I think they were like, you know, that not only were they, they at the game, but they were you know, all the same ones were in the ads. The one, one ad that I thought was really, and this is a category that rarely advertises on the Super Bowl, really was the Popeyes ad. Popeyes finally has wings. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was a, like, that was, well done with a celebrity, got the point across, you know, um, and that's restaurant category, either quick service, you know, generally doesn't do very good stuff. So, um, so I did not get that ad at all. I didn't understand that uh, at all. Now, so oh. I was like, am I missing something? Did, did this guy, like the actor, I recognize him, but I didn't, I couldn't place him. And I was like, is there a joke about him as an actor or have I just, oh, you was I know. reading too much into it? <laughs> totally lost so he was frozen in time like chirogenics and so they finally thought him out and all That's, these things okay. had changed over time right i was, but I was like, definitely overthinking it yeah okay 
I definitely that, thought that, I definitely thought for that joke it would have been good to pick somebody who was sort of frozen in our collective memories from like we hadn't seen them in mm. you know a couple of decades or something like oh, I, thought that, I thought that was a bit of a messed opportunity with casting I mean I, I agree I thought that I thought the I thought the idea was really funny the idea of like we live in a better world now and and kind of bringing that to life in an entertaining way I just thought it would have been nice to see them choose somebody who was like, oh, yeah, that person. Where the hell have they been? Mr. Like, T. He was in another ad. The, the yeah. Yeah, everyone was like, oh, oh he's still alive. Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I also felt like that as well. I was like, oh, good to see Mr. T. Um, I agree with the, the theme of celebrity was kind of, I mean, obviously Super Bowl it always comes with its celebrities, but it seemed like celebrity was uh, – mm even more potent and powerful this year. What was nice was the use of celebrity. I think people are, aren't just putting mm. celebrities in their commercials. They're actually doing some really creative stuff around it. And yeah. Like uh, Michael Sarah for Sarah B, I thought oh. was just really hilarious. And, and uh, that, that one played pretty well too uh, with, with everyone. And, you know, just a, it didn't feel like just a spokesperson. I mean, there's a joke in there. It's yeah. tied right to the brand. Uh, doing nothing but talking about the brand the whole way through and 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 it was hilarious yeah and, yeah. That, that and was it was special. a social forward so i think there was an interesting theme there was that that was like a social forward campaign first right and then it backed it up with a commercial i think we'll start to see more of that but like you know i mean uh, arnold was another kind of one i mean a little bit more of a teaser and i think that you know that whole theme of teasers is interesting. Well, I mean, the, the Super Bowl is not just a Super Bowl broadcast anymore. We're, when we're mm -hmm. talking commercials for Super Bowl commercials, it's an entire ecosystem and it has to work right. on, all, on all sides at the same time. And it's, you know, it, it it's the teaser week into the pre-release week, the social content, the conversations, the, you know, how it's released and who, where, how the PR plays off of, all the different elements. And then for a lot of brands, it's ongoing too. It doesn't just stop, right. stop there. I mean, for, for us, we, we certainly work on that. You're not creating one big spot. You're creating 20, 20 commercials that will roll out over social and broadcast right. for the next six months. And I think having that all work together and be more than one hit, have it be kind of a full 360 campaign, I think is uh, where you win. Um, for sure. And that's one of the things certainly over, like certainly here, we won't see. And it was a question I was going to ask is, are we seeing, like, is there more of that where it's not just like a, a one-off, you know, millions and millions and millions, you know, a one-off. It did feel like there was more to them. And then even maybe tied to that was some level of consistency in some of the brands that were reusing celebrities they've used before. So like the scrubs yeah. in T-Mobile, um, obviously the Dunkin' Donuts with Ben Affleck, you know, and that felt <clears throat> interesting to me is that like you're, you're kind of now saying, well, how can we be consistent even by creating a new piece of work that's going to cost a lot of money? Yeah. Yeah. I think you've definitely seen, seen some, some brands, you either kind of take one road or the other, right? Some brands <laughs> definitely choose to like, how can we build equity in, in, in the, like with, like you're seeing with Ben Affleck, um or t-mobile and then other brands once you've used one celebrity you, you're never going back to that well again you always want to surprise people and keep it keep it keep it going and i think that's just a kind of creative choice that that has made brand to brand i don't know if that's ultimately going to be a trend because there are such strong feelings on both sides of that argument um but the t-mobile thing i will say the first time they did that i thought it was one of the worst ads i had ever seen in the super bowl and my wife it was one of my wife's favorite ads she had ever seen in the Super Bowl, and, I, and, and like it really made me kind of look at it through a different lens. And 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 I think them continuing on with it, people love that. And it, yeah. that was another one that played really well um, at the you know at the party that I was at. Like people people really liked it and 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 stopped and, wa and watched that one as well. I think because they knew what to expect and they knew they liked it from before. And, and mm -hmm. Another brand that did well on building on on their mountain was uh, Paramount Plus, and kind of uh, that, like continuing on and getting funnier and funnier each year. And, and this year uh, was was a great one. I mean, it's interesting. It, it was it's it's hard to tell who saw what length of commercials in different streams. Mm -hmm. or, 
Um, where it played for me, it was only a 30 second spot where online it's obviously there was a 90, there's a 60, there's, a, you know, the extended content. It was mm -hmm. really, um, but they, they've done a great job of kind of building on that equity too. Yeah. Well, I think we bring up an interesting, the beer category, something we haven't talked about. And I think it's really like, I used to always really look forward to beer commercials. You know, yeah. I thought th there was always that opportunity for levity and freshness. And it was, um, and I, for me anyway, I just felt like this year it was like a snooze category kind of all together. And, it was. It was usually yeah. a good old fashioned beer war going on. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that was great, like, actually. Was that last year, the beer war? Like, there was actually, was there up two brands? But I think generally speaking, you always kind of like, oh, I liked this beer ad or I liked this beer ad. Like okay. it was such a thing. Like you would look forward to kind of like, yeah, how outlandish they would get, like how crazy the beer ads would get. Yeah, I agree. Like beer and cars were kind of the, the, the American staples for a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, but, both are quiet categories. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and it, you know, I think it just brings up like the Clydesdales, right? We're always like, something you really looked forward to, like what's the twist this year? And this this year I was kind of like, they just threw it in, I think. <laughs> it didn't feel like it was as thought, well thought out as it had been in years past, for sure, for me. Yeah, I'm always a sucker for Clydesdales and puppies and any put Clydesdale <laughs> no. It works every time, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, big and beautiful, but yeah, I think uh, the, you kind of you miss that kind of one one upsmanship uh, where the brands are sort yeah. of really trying to compete, and it was noticeable this year. It was a little quieter. Yeah. Any insight into why that? Because I was going to ask about kind of missing advertisers, and it, you know, I hadn't spotted that the U.S. car manufacturers is that a mm -hmm. a signal of kind of the, the the state of the industry, or or any thoughts of why that they may not have been advertising kind of beer and oh, there was a few beer ads, but nothing you know of note. Yeah. I mean, I, I... No, I'm... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I have no idea why. I think you always see kind of trends of, kind of, of industry sort of swelling and shrinking depending on the year. I mean, crypto was obviously huge for a year or two. And then <laughs> there's no crypto there's this no year. No more crypto anymore. So like, I think it's just sort of ebbs and flows of, of that. I don't know why, I don't know why the beer, beer manufacturers would be shying away from the Super Bowl or, or what the reason for that would be. Uh, really yeah um it is a shame it is a shame though i'd love to see them come back uh, and michelob ultra with a messy and... yeah well, so that There's was in so that's that's kind of seems to have rated highly like in all the stuff yeah. i've i've looked at people are like they love that ad now again i'm you know i didn't get to make that ad but i was like it's messy on a beach kicking a football and I like a week previously, I'd seen Messi kicking a ball against a wall for an ad for Saudi. Like I felt like, is there nothing That's what else? Messi can... does. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what Messi does. I mean, it did feel like a classic, a uh, kind of you know '90s esque '1990s commercial where it's just like you, you get your athlete and they do some cool moves on a beach and kick the ball across the, the water to the to the boat. <laughs> yeah, but you know it. That formula does work. And uh, I think Messi uh, having his moment in America and then bringing that mm. to the Super Bowl was obviously uh, a, a huge win for them. And, and Messi is, is certainly popular as ever. But yeah, that's what he does. He he he, he kicks the ball, dribbles the ball. <laughs> I mean, brilliantly. Worked with Messi before is pretty much what he does. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, he's... Um... Ta talented guy, of course, of course. One of the things I, I thought about this year as well, I felt that maybe like music was was missing because music can play such an incredibly strong role in ads. And as I watched them through, I wasn't kind of going, I don't think there's any really strong, you know, ads that were really relying on the music. Bar the Beyonce ad, I don't know who she was advertising for, but it definitely was a Beyonce ad. Um, I can't remember what brand it was, uh, but I didn't feel Verizon, like it was kind of Verizon. Music. Verizon. There Verizon, you go. Verizon. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you spot that at all, or were you kind of? I suppose if you're entertaining. Where does the music fit in? I guess it's trying to, to get the balance right and not trying to throw too much at it. I think that has something to do with big and big humorous uh, productions. Don't 
don't need to rely on uh, music mm. to drive it as much. When you get into things that are more visual and emotional, uh, musical tracks yeah. take take the front stage. Um, I don't yeah. know if that's the reason, but I do think that we, you know you get you get uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger saying dialogue through a whole thing. You're not going to go too crazy on the, on the music there. No. Yeah. I mean, and back to the Volkswagen spot, like, you know, that was huge. I, I love Neil Diamond. I love me some Neil Diamond. So that was, uh, I mean, that spot really actually relied on that music track big time. Otherwise it was a rip <laughs> And what was it uh, with the, he gets us that was a, an excess song, right? Today's show is brought to you by the Indie List CMO Collective. This service from the Indie List provides you with access to a curated range of highly experienced and talented senior marketing specialists. Visit the IndieList.ie to find out more. I did want to talk a bit about cast. And so we've talked a bit about the role of celebrities, and I think, you know, certainly you're probably guaranteed in some ways like a good performance from celebrities. I mean, you, you know look at like Michael Sierra, I think like a credible comedic performance, really, mm -hmm. really good. But then in some of the ads where the supporting cast were incredibly well cast. So like the Pringles ad, I thought the mm -hmm. star of that ad was the girl in the shop. I thought she, I thought she was brilliant. I thought she just <laughs> was amazing. She was definitely the humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved at the end, but like, it's so like, it's, it's incredibly hard to, to kind of, you're putting so much money in this, like the, the casting. Do you mm. think that's not a, a only reason why, but like working with celebrities that are actors, there's a known entity there, even though it costs a lot more money, but like that, you know, that kind of certainty that you're going to get a good performance. I Partially, but I think, I think that's more about tapping into their fan base. Like a lot, a lot of it is like, how do you, how do, how do you not only kind of create an ad that's great, but create an ad that, that you know people will, fans will want to see because it, it, it celebrates the thing that those people love about that celebrity. Like, how do you, how do you kind of tap in on the social side to their fan base and have them kind of want to share, want to share the thing that you've created? Like, that's a huge part of, of choosing which celebrity, which fan base to activate, like all of the kind of teeth, like the, the, that lead up to the Super Bowl ad generating kind of momentum for what you're doing. Those choices, um, matter quite a lot. It's just, it's not just kind of who's going to be the funniest person in your ad, but, but it's going to be, how is it going to play within culture and, and spread? And I still think you need a great idea. Yeah. I mean, you need a good story. Like you can have all the celebrities in the world and a shitty idea and it just doesn't matter. You know, you need, your, yeah. you need the great idea. I think there is beyond, beyond the sort of, uh, media channels that these celebrities are and their fan bases that they come with, which is huge. I think they also are, can be a shortcut to, uh, mm. to, to expressing your idea. Obviously yeah. Michael Sarah comes on, you kind of know it's already going to be humorous. Aubrey Plaza comes on and she's like, she obviously mm. is, is somebody known for her sort of deadpan delivery. So having a blast, you got, you got the tension built in. These are, it's, it is a shortcut to storytelling. So when you are looking for a, a good story well told, uh, the, they're sort of uh, executional devices that, are, that help get you there and get to a bigger audience quickly. When you only have 30 seconds for yeah. whatever it is, $7 million, uh, you want it to count. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and actually, then it's interesting that when you see a celeb in more than one ad, like, I don't know, I, I, as a, if that was me as a brand owner, I would be, I remember that happened this side of the world at a Christmas ad. There was a, mm. a a retailer and then an alcohol brand, and the celebrity was in both ads, and neither knew, neither knew that the celebrity was in each other's ad, and they were not happy. So yeah, that's not, know, a, that's not a good thing. It's yeah, not a we, good thing. that's usually you know, usually you will be told by, you know, mm. the the manager somebody somebody's going to let you know that they're that they're in another ad. But like we had we had Usher appear in our ad, we knew that that he was also going to be in a BMW ad. We also knew that theirs played before halftime and ours was coming right after halftime. So we were kind of playing with that, with that, that dynamic, but we went in knowing, and I think it's, it's pretty important that, that you know those things. In both BMW and Uber Eats, we're using Usher very contextually in, yeah. in making sure that joke 
played off the moment. So that that felt okay. You know, we were yeah. very aware and very okay with that. Yeah, it's very. It's an interesting thing to kind of like. I think that, that yeah, to to know is is important, right? You'd expect that knowledge. Yeah. Uh, look, we, we've moved into talking a little bit about uh, the Uber Eats ad and certainly from the teaser perspective and, and the, the, the re, kind of the, the pre-Super Bowl, it was the one that seemed to create an incredible amount of buzz and particularly around, obviously, David Victoria Beckham. You have that moment that came from the Netflix documentary that was really fresh. But and I've, I've read a bit about this because obviously the brief for you guys came in last year sometime right probably not soon after the last super bowl and that hadn't happened so how i'd love to hear kind of the story about kind of the making of the ad and kind of how that came about well i I mean i think that that goes to carrie's point of you need a good idea uh as a base and to back up to the very beginnings we started working on it uh, er, early last summer um going for kind of the big ideas like getting to a core big idea and then and then from that, getting to scripts and from scripts, getting to dialing in j- different jokes and testing the waters with in, in this formula, there, there's, it was a bit of a vignette kind of let's show multiple examples. So we could we could talk about different people being in it and what kinds of archetypes we would play with and what kind of like different fan bases those celebrities would come with. So you're kind of speaking a little bit of something for everybody. And once that's sort of there, as you get closer and closer to production, we always try and get things. I mean, for us, we needed <clears throat> we needed to play off collective memory. So we wanted we wanted things that were very very relevant to either nostalgia or were something very you know very much in the zeitgeist of culture at the moment. So mm-hmm. find, kind of finding a bit of both, and that's where we did land on you know Jennifer Aniston and, and David Schwimmer, uh, kind of bringing in sort of the the whole friends idea in, in a bit of a forgetful moment there of obviously something that should not have been forgotten, <laughs> but it allows for room like the Beckham's documentary where you're sitting there what, looking at these, you know, this great couple with a tremendous chemistry and everyone's eating up that documentary. Yeah. And we could, we, we were already discussing using them. And then once they kind of came on board and then that meme started going at that moment and we are like, well, this would make a tremendous little script in and of itself. And so we had the big idea and then you're able to kind of let, let culture help decide like what might hit and be extra potent uh, for a teaser. What was that conversation like with, with them, <laughs> you know, uh, bringing that to them? Like were they, look, obviously they were open to it because it happened, but, you know, how are you bringing those ideas to them? I mean, they have, they have a great sense of humor and they were, they honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't much of a conversation. They got it immediately and were, and were up for it. And they were just like, I mean, even, even when it came to shooting it, they were sort of like, you know, pretty, pretty specific around like what, you know, how, how much of his face is going to be peeking out of the door. Okay. And like, we were, you know, we had them in there and we were sort of, um, you know, the environment was different. We really tried to kind of match the energy of it without recreating it. That's the other thing that we were trying to do is, is not just, it's reverence it enough and copy it enough that is rewarding, but also give it enough newness that it is something that people will want to watch. And it feels like it's something that you're giving fans that is net new, not something that's just like recreating mm-hmm. a movie that they've already seen. Yeah. And I also read that the uh, David Schwimmer and Jennifer Aniston, obviously, look again, maybe go back to that point, like you, you probably have some sense of we're going to get a good performance from these two people. But I was reading you guys saying that they were very kind of, you know, involved on the day of the shoot, kind of saying, this is how we want to interact. Or maybe if we said this, like how, how involved were they on the shoot? Well, I, I think with, with any celebrity, what we try to do is, is have, have the script there and, and the ideas on paper, but you work with them to find their voice. How do they say it in their way? And, and obviously that, uh, you know, they have that dialed in. They work together for 10 years. There's, yeah. there is that natural mm-hmm. sort of nuance of humor and how the reactions would happen. And, you let them build on it um, and you let them make it their own. So again, it, it, it was a new scene, but it's very much, you let them kind of make it authentic. And it's, it's getting that authentic side of the celebrity that makes them truly special. So they're not just a spokesperson for the brand, yeah. but you're actually feeling like you're getting to see the real Jennifer Aniston, the real David Schwimmer, even though the scene is obviously uh, uh, not real. Yeah. 
I, what yeah, was they, it? Would, they would they would kind of talk between takes so like oh we'll try one where we hug this time or we'll try one where i stop you this time like they were they were kind of like playing with it they were they were playing with it and giving each other props on 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 things to try and it was it was honestly amazing to see i mean we've all seen friends and and, and love friends and they've done that kind of like Ross is pissed off thing many times. <laughs> and so watching that kind of like bring that back and, and play with it was really fun. Yeah, well, I think there's that, only only two people who have that muscle memory and it's those two, right? Yeah, like you yeah. can write all the scripts Immediately. all day long that you want, but that muscle memory of those characters is yeah. really just embedded in a couple of people, them. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. How did it feel then for you guys? I mean, it looks, you've done them before, but how did it feel when you were, watching the Super Bowl and then your ad came on, you know, I'm sure people around you knew it was your ad, but what's that, what was that feeling like? I mean, it's fun. I don't know. It's, it's fun. You've seen it so much by the time it airs on the Super Bowl. It's sort of just like, it is kind of a relief that there it is. And it aired. Um, it is, it is fun. Like I was surrounded by a bunch of friends who all knew I did the ad. So that was another ad that everybody shut up and watched, which was cool. <laughs> Um, and then it was, you know, cheers afterwards. And it was great. I, I always find it really hard to watch my commercial on, on the Super Bowl. And it, like, it's very distracting because I'm trying to pay attention to like, is it airing correctly? Does it look good? Does it sound good? Is it the volume right? But at the same time, I'm trying to watch everyone else's reactions. Yeah. And then, and then I'm just trying to appreciate the moment, but then it goes by so quickly. And it just like, I, I feel like all this intensity hits me at once and, it's it's a little overwhelming and then, and then it's over and and it it's exhilarating but also a little bit of a almost a letdown really quickly in a way. <laughs> That's funny. It That's kind of reminds me of the final emotion. the final play of the game. Like you kind of the, the the guy who caught the final pass of the game, you know, yeah. was like, yeah, and then I just blacked out like <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Like he, I mean, people are like, where's the ball? And he's like, I have no idea. Oh, I have no idea. He's like, I didn't, barely even knew we won until like Mahomes came up and said, you're a champion. There was like, oh my God. What there was, I distinctly remember that we've done now four years of Uber Eats, uh, Super Bowl spots. And the first year, <clears throat> um, I do remember being so anxious for it to play and it didn't play in the exact slot that it was supposed to. Oh. And I did feel like I was going to pass out. I, I kind of <laughs> went for it. Like, oh, it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, so much work has gone into it. You know, nine months of, of you know, you know, from, from the early days through all the production and all the, all the, you know, people involved and, it all comes down to that that one little moment. Yeah, and like it's, the hundreds of little decisions that get made along the way. Like, it, you know, there's all these moments that, I, I I think it may have been done before, what I was saying to somebody here, like you, anyone who's maybe not in the advertising industry, it's hard to explain that. Do you know what I mean? Like the small mm -hmm. conversations, the moments, the things that you have to obsess about. Um, I'd love to find a way of capturing it someday. You know, like I feel like it would make an incredible Netflix documentary, maybe, maybe for next year's Uber Eats yeah. ad. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, I know we're coming to time. So I, uh, I, one of the things that sometimes gets talked about, uh, you know, around Super Bowl ads, like with, with you know, criticism of it, it's saying, well, it's big money, it's wasteful, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. But then I, like, I probably have a counter view, which is it's probably, I think it's good for, advertising it's good for creativity it's good for people to push you know i think that this year there was more pushing the boundaries to kind of enjoyment and you know brands taking big swings i know we're probably maybe a little bit biased but when you hear those conversations carrie what's your view on on kind of the mm. that debate well i wish brands would take big swings all the time <laughs> like you know i mean I, it's so so there's that part i wish every day was the super bowl like with advertising and caring about ideas and the craft and all of that like that i think has been lost um especially like in the digital you know era that we find ourselves in um so so there's that um and 
but I will say there really is like for 7 million, it is a platform for awareness. No question. It is like, there is, there's still value in, even though the price just keeps going up and up and up. Um, if it's timed right with, you know, certain culture, I mean, I sort of like look at like a Super Bowl spot kind of at the cornerstone of like what's going on in culture, consumer, and then brand, like, and then there's that like big idea that, and, you know, I think that should, that should be a, you know, interesting way of thinking about it all year round. Um, so yeah, I just, I wish, I wish the craft and us caring some, you know, and it, you don't have to spend a ton of money either and have celebrity to have a great idea and like really respect the craft of, of advertising for sure. Um, and, and I also will just say that I think it also isn't just about the craft of the ad. It's the craft of how do you take that and extend it into all like the product itself and, you know, thinking about all of those touch points, you know, that oftentimes we as in advertising specifically, you don't get assigned to think about, but like, what is that customer experience? Like, yeah. you know, customer service or customer care, or retail experience with the brand. And, you know, that, that to me is, I think where we, you know, brand experience is where we really need to start thinking about um, where this business yeah. goes down the road. Yeah, and it's, I couldn't agree more. I think that, you know, so, sometimes I think when you mention brand, I hear a lot, you know, people assume immediately that you're like, oh, this person just wants to make a TV ad. And it's actually the when you have to think about every single thing. Because again, I remember working, you know, my last place and, you know, hearing someone from sales saying, I sent out an email and I got clip art. I put it into the body of the email that said, you know, whatever it was. And I was like, oh my God, like that's the brand. You know, if you're the front line of the brand, like please come right. stop this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But how so about you? Before... I mean, obviously your your agency's been heavily involved with, you know, Uber Eats and big Super Bowl ads, but like what's your how do you feel when you hear people kind of saying it's it's wasteful? Well, I I think that's just a lack of understanding of what your money is getting you. Um, it's the, it was the, this Super Bowl was the most viewed broadcast in U.S. history. Um, yeah. So not not just the eyeballs there, but if you do it right and all the PR that you can get around around it with the teasers and and the build up to the game and all the brand touch points, like you you are putting on display. It is it is the brand being put on display in such a bigger way that just you know, a, a slot for X millions of dollars. Like you're, you're building something much bigger. So the earned media that you get around all that press is is where the dollars count for. That is the eyes that are seeing it, the talk, if you do it right, the talk around it, the conversation, the fact that we're doing podcasts about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is what you're getting. So that, that money in the Super Bowl sense, it stretches a long way. And then you know, how we always turn these productions, you're not just creating one spot, you're creating, uh, you know, content for the next six months. So everything that goes into it, yes, the media buy for that particular 30 seconds or 60 seconds spot during the game is a hefty amount. But what it creates in the longevity of that campaign and what it does for the brand is, you know, it, I think well worth it for any any big player. Yeah. Well, and you brought up like the sales guy sent you, you know, clip art, like, you know, don't underestimate too, especially like in CPG or even an automotive industry, beverage, like getting your distributors and all those folks excited about it. Yeah. So like Oreo, I think is an interesting, you know, we didn't talk about it. Um, I thought, you know, interesting insight. It was a little bit more of like your insight is showing um, ad, but um i love when but, people you know, say that <laughs> you know i but i i'm out, i was kind of curious about what oreo was going to do but i just will say that like you know having worked in automotive like if you you as a manufacturer and oem don't sell cars to dealers and dealers sell cars to humans right and you're not getting those dealers excited and and this sort of tearing happens everywhere right <laughs> like it's unless it's a real direct to consumer model, like you have to get the retailers 
you know, excited, the HEBs, Kroger's, Targets, Walmarts, and, um, you know, there's no kind of bigger way to do that. Say, hey, we're in a Super Bowl ad. Here's the point of say, I mean, that's where it all like really knits together and the, you know, the rubber hits the road per se, yeah. is that yeah. it becomes this like catalyst for a lot of other touch points and conversations with people who actually have a great impact on your business. Mm, yeah, so true. Yeah. Uh, Dave, I'm going to ask you the last question is you've just kind of come out of making the ad, seeing the ad, putting it live. Do you get to sleep for a few days now that it's all over? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going skiing. I'm leaving in two days. I'm going to go with my family. And yeah, we're going to go skiing. Excellent. Uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I think there's a bit of downtime, but it, honestly, a lot of things get pushed to the side, especially in the last, in the final kind of month of sort of like getting everything out. And so right after you sort of are, are, are reminded of all of the things that you procrastinated on and pushed push the side so we're, we're kind of heavily like getting back to the, of the actual of the rest of the job um you know basketball enjoy it for a little bit but then back to back to work and there's so many people involved yeah like, through the agency and on the brand side from you know it's not just a creative team obviously but the work that it takes from the business affairs to account team and producers and i mean it, it there's a lot of uh a lot goes into it and a lot of people who are going to hopefully get a nice big weekend. Yeah. I think, Matt, I think Matt told you this, but like, I mean, we're, we're also, you know, especially at our, at our place, like there's so many people that, that, that are just sort of like in it. We, we ended up delaying our holiday party and we're going to have a, we're going to have a kind of February holiday party this year and, and all kind of get together and, 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 uh, blow off some steam. Yeah. <laughs> celebrate the great work well listen thanks thank you thanks okay. so much for joining me on the special episode i love love talking about ads i could do it all day long love talking about the super bowl ads and um, great to hear your your views what you enjoy carrie thanks so much dave matt yeah. thanks a million for joining me thank you thank you for having us until next year yeah next year exactly <laughs> annual <laughs> Well, that's it for this episode of That's What I Call Marketing. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the Super Bowl ads that Kerry, Matt and Dave enjoyed watching this year. Uh, the ones that had an impact, the ones that maybe fell a little bit short. Kind of the state of the industry as it was represented in the ads. Where we had ads that we didn't see that we might have missed this year. Kind of interesting for me to hear about the the US car manufacturers. I don't think I'd spotted that. Um, and of course, hearing about how the Uber Eats ad was created and getting behind the scenes look with the guys at Special Group. So thanks so much for listening or watching That's What I Call Marketing. If you would like to get in touch, visit that's what I call marketing.com. Of course, that's where you can find all our previous episodes. You can link with us on social, Instagram, uh, X and LinkedIn. And of course, please do give us a review. It makes such a huge difference when you review or rate the show. Helps us really find a new uh, engaged audience and community of marketers just like yourself. So until the next episode, for me, your host, Connor Byrne, thanks so much. Thanks to the Indie List for sponsoring today's show. Visit theindielist.ie to find out more. If you would like to reach an engaged community of marketing leaders, get in touch with That's What I Call Marketing to discuss sponsorship opportunities.